In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a collapsed medieval tower house. Perfect huh. for your games. I wonder how. I know. Let's make our version of this. <laughs> Hey folks, I'm Lave. Welcome to my channel called Devs and Dice. Today I'm going to show you how I let myself be inspired and create this ruined tower and barrack. The inspiration for this build came from Eric's Hobby Workshop, and he is one of the best, if not the best, Mordheim terrain crafters on YouTube. And I found this build of his to be particularly inspiring, with its organic and interesting shapes. And today, I'm going to do my interpretation of this. So with that, let's get cracking. I started this project by bringing out my Proxon Hotwire Foam Cutter. A while back I had some of this baby blue XPS foam and it's quite soft and bouncy so I was looking for a project where I could use some of it and to make the basic shape of the riser this was perfect. When it comes to shapes like this, I generally tend to err on the side of speed. So here I'm just using some toothpicks and some hot glue and putting them together nice and snug. When it came to the actual tower, I knew I wanted to construct a tower that was wider than I've ever done before. So I simply cut out a piece and then glued it to the actual existing riser. I went back and forth a little bit about what sort of material should I use, but eventually Pringles won. Now I knew I wouldn't have full coverage for the entire tower, but that was fine because I knew I wanted it to be destroyed. For me, Mordheim and its terrain means being able to go inside and on the outside of each terrain piece, creating nice and interesting firing lines. As you can see, I made some simple plans for my building and uh, tell me if you want me to share these plans, I'm happy to. What I did here was just to glue them on to some cardstock with some uh, glue stick and cut out all of the windows. And once I had all of them cut out, I actually used some masking tape that would act essentially as some hinges for my build. And you know what? It actually worked brilliantly. So this is another way that if you don't have foam core, you can always get the same sort of structure. And the easy part about this is that you now can draw in all of your floors and such for future embellishments. Like here, when I'm putting it on the wooden boards that indicate from the outside where a floor starts and ends. And the good thing is I can do this flat on my hobby desk instead of it being glued into a project. And I even went so far, as you can see, that I actually started decorating the walls with all of the timber and so on, because there really was no reason why I wouldn't do this if I just planned it correctly. And I really recommend taking your time here. Don't get stressed, just be methodical. Now, these look kind of like <laughs> three faces or something, but once the glue has dried properly, I come in and cut off all of the excess or even tear some of the pieces that should have broken timber apart. I use these Lego windows. If you're interested in getting some of these, you can get them from Bricklink. I have information usually in my descriptions and it's not an affiliate link of any sort, but I know that a lot of people have been asking me for them. So always check the descriptions and, and you shall find. Now, what I started doing here was actually the structure for the floors. And I again, I don't remember what this is called, but it's like when you cut a piece of the wood, so they sort of become interlocking. I tend to like that quite a lot because it looks nice and it demands a little bit more precision in your measurements. And it's oddly satisfying when you just get to snap things into place. But you'll see later how I did some mistakes here. This big block of XPS foam, you might wonder what the heck I'm doing here, but this is to signify the bottom floor. I already knew that I wanted the bottom floor to not be accessible, but I wanted to make it visually clear why it wasn't accessible. So here I'm using some of my XPS foam bricks and just cladding the walls as much as I need to. And usually that is a little bit too much. 
so I had to cut some away and then hot glue the walls and get that big piece of filler into the building. Now the story I, I worked with was that the tower or at least half of the tower sort of collapsed and it hit the actual building causing it to yeah you know crash and here you can see some mistakes i realized uh, that uh, hey leif you can't reach in there that that won't work so i just destroyed that beam and split it in half enabling anyone to put their hand on the first floor and access the window at the far end here you can see I'm going through quite quickly, alternating between different tasks. Uh, I knew that I was going to acquire quite a large amount of bricks, so I had to, at some point, make new bricks, which I'm not going to go into, but I'm just sort of showing how you can always be crafting. While something is drying, you can do something else, and, and then you sort of take it in stages here and there. So here I'm actually coming in with some 5mm balsa wood dowels as the sort of exterior decorative pieces, but for support, partly for the, the walls, but also for, as you can see, the actual roof. And here I thought long and hard about the roof, how I wanted to do it, but since I wanted to be accessible, I needed basically half of the roof to be quite destroyed. Once the building was done, I figured eh, I might as well glue it into place and start having a feel how it looks like. And here was the first thing. I wasn't a fan of how the side beams looked like they just stopped in nowhere. So I bricked the entire building up, but eventually I decided to remove part of the side beams and replace them with bricks all the way up, which I thought looked better. I also took this opportunity to add some timber on the outside to indicate of structure inside. When it came to the tower, I first bricked it up to where the Pringles can started, and then I cut most of the Pringle can away just to indicate that ruined state. And then I start bricking it upwards. While doing this, I kept a track of where each floor was, and I super glued together with some activator in the beams for the future floors. Once I had bricked all of that up, I decided to let it dry and I shift focus to the door. Now I had one of these plastic doors and I wanted to signify why you couldn't go in there. And my idea was that the tower collapsed and essentially all of the brick and debris filled the bottom floor, causing the door to actually stand ajar with bricks coming out of it. Once everything had dried over at the tower, I started thinking about what I wanted to do with it. I knew I wanted some arrow slits, but I also felt like the platform needed to be larger than the actual tower. So I started building out bricks and then gluing some timber onto it. I added some supports, uh, both for visual interest, but also because it just makes sense. And then I started constructing the actual wall, which was tricky. I added similar kind of supports to the bottom of the tower, and it was at this point I really hated how the timber looked like. They didn't really fit the round shape, so I just created a template and I just redid what I had done before, but this time it looked like somebody had actually constructed this once upon a time with some intent. Here was the task that I found most aggravating and annoying and frustrating. Taking small 5mm bricks into a space of 2 inches is tricky, and it demands patience and accuracy. But eventually, I managed to get to a place where I was relatively happy with it, so I could continue on. Now after that, uh, it was actually a pleasure to do a somewhat simple but monotonous task, and that was to put down all of the shingles. And these shingles are constructed out of a packaging paper, which I have bent ever so slightly. I finish the shingles off uh, at the top of the roof by adding some tiles to cover the edge. Here I'm constructing an arrow slit, which I did by cutting through the Pringles can and the foam. 
and I made sure that it was quite narrow on the outside and more wider on the inside. And I topped it off with some XPS bricks just to signify that here is an arrow slit. Now when it came to the courtyard, I wanted to use some of my old tiles from an old project and I made sure that these were a different size than the quote unquote bricks that I used for the walls, just for visual interest. The supports I had for the tower I really liked, so I decided to use them on the building as well. And they, as you can see, provide nice tactical cover. I've made stairs like this in previous videos and usually how I do is that I create a core of XPS foam in 5mm increments which I then cover with my bricks. This gives me quite a nice end result and I really do prefer individual bricks as often as I can. Here comes a little trick if you ever have a dowel of wood that is not balsa and you want to have wood grain, well then just take your saw and gently go sideways. You get quite a nice grain. Now these I uh, cut to approximately I think one inch length and I'm going to use these as posts for the fencing around the courtyard, which is constructed of coffee stir sticks and these posts. And while that is drying, we might as well add a little bit more of a bulk to the actual rubble that we're going to have on the courtyard and coming from the tower landing into the building. Now this was something I was quite worried about, but let's do this. First step is to cover all of this bulk with a lot of glue. And here I made my own little cocktail of uh, bricks and some timber, which I just poured out all over where it would make sense. This was topped off by spraying on a mixture of Mod Podge, water and some dish soap. While this was still wet, I added a little bit of gravel and stones in different sizes and shapes just to nail home that this was a proper ruined tower just collapsed into our building. Now I let that dry for approximately three days and eventually, lo and behold, everything was locked in place. And of course, I created a bespoke ladder that we're going to glue in on a later stage. Like all of my terrain projects, I do prefer using the airbrush for priming. And I start by priming it in Vallejo Black Primer, which I then zenithal with white ink, shooting it from approximately 60, 45 degrees to 90 degrees above. The next vital step that I always take is to cover everything with some burnt umber transparent ink. Why, you might ask? Well, it creates a nice base for any sort of ruined terrain piece where dirt has gathered. This I then stipple on top of with some dark grey. And as you can see, it's stippling, so I'm covering most of it. And then I come in with some light grey as a dry brush going from top to bottom. And I do a similar thing for all of the wooden parts where I come in with a beige from top to bottom. If the terrain project looks a little bit dusty, just have faith in the process. It's going to get worse before it gets better. <laughs> Here I'm coming in with some spackle, which I'm going to use on all of the stonework and then dry off majority of it. And in all earnest, I just had enough time to do this before I realized I needed to run and watch the new Spider-Man film on cinema with my family. It was quite awesome. Now, the reason why I kept it in this video was because I wanted to show that even when you're not crafting, you can still be crafting. Because as I came home, all of the spackle had dried and I could start adding posters to my build. The lead grating got painted in some lead belcher and the shingles got painted in some dark sea blue, some typhus corrosion and riser rust was added to the frames of the windows dry brushing up all of the shingles, but here comes the star of the show. Army Painter's Strong Tone. Now through the airbrush, this is the perfect tool I find to add that grime. Graffiti was added by using some white transparent ink. 
and some blood for the blood god to add a little bit of grim dark to the bill. Some earth flocking using coconut fiber, and I think we're done. I have to say, I'm really happy with this build, the way it turned out. I think that the build itself and the interesting non-linear shape of it really adds to the dynamic shape, which in turn is what I love about Mordheim. I want to extend a thank you to Eric for making that video. It really inspired me in this build. And I think Picasso once said, good artists copy, great artists steal. Well, I don't know about that. Me, I'm just hoping that this build can stand on its own and doesn't feel like a cheap copy of some sorts. In other words, that I paid respects to Eric's build while still making it my own. Please feel free to tell me what you think of a build in the comments. I also want to extend a thank you to my dear patrons for their patience and support. And a special shout out goes to my champion and legend level patrons. So thank you Adam Devonshire, Andreas Wienberg, Angata, Arjen Angenent, Bo Algrian, Erik Ortman, Jason Chastain, Juan Marconesa, Lawrence Davis, Mad Nurse, Magnus Solberg, Light Kira 25, Niklas Swedenlind, and Oliver Grandund. Thank you so much, folks. You're awesome. And I also want to thank you, the viewer, for watching this video. If you like this video and you want to see more of my videos, then YouTube recommends you should be watching these. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next video.